I'm Olivia. I'm the Southern Yankee Stitcher and I'm here for my floss tube number five. I have been finishing and stitching a lot this week. I got a lot done. I uh, did some shopping, I have some haul, and um, just I'm here to talk to you about that this week. Um, let me start by showing you what I had in my hand here. You may, if you've been watching my other videos, you recognize this piece. This is the um, Button Heart Sampler by, um, who's it by? Homespun Elegance. But I converted it. I really changed it all. I just used their size, their outline, and their letters, and I kind of moved them all around, made it a patriotic piece. And I finished it this week with Homespun on the back, and it's stuffed with sawdust. I love using sawdust. Love the way it feels. And so this... This little pillow will probably go in my giant dough bowl that I've been trying to fill, and this will take up a good amount of space um, when I decorate for um, in, in a patriotic theme, and that, that's normally from May through August, through, through um, Labor Day when I do it. So I'm, I'm real pleased with that, and I think that is... That is completely finished. I'm not going to put any trim or anything on it. I'm just going to leave it kind of plain. <clears throat> Another one I did is, this is called Sarah's Christmas Urn by Shakespeare's Peddler. This is the chart. Sorry, I need something behind this chart. Here's the chart. And it was in the, let's see, this is the 2019 Christmas winter issue of Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher. And that's where I got this pattern um, here. And I stitched it up on a 32 count vintage Sahara Belfast linen. I backed it with some corduroy. These were someone's pants at one time. <laughs> I got from, from a thrift store. I love the big, um, what do you call those? I don't know what you call those things. My husband's told me because he worked in the cotton mill when they made corduroy. The wells, maybe. It's a large well corduroy. Um, the, the, and I, again, I stuffed this with, with sawdust. If you haven't used sawdust before, I've bought the, um, walnut shells or the lizard litter before. But I haven't used it. Um, I got all this sawdust from a place it's only a couple miles from me. They do, um, they make pallets. And I had a friend ask them if I could have some sawdust. They probably thought I was crazy. But um, I, I got, I have a big tub full. I can, I can make smalls all day long <laughs> and not use up all the sawdust I have. Um, but I think I'm going to put some trim around this one. I love just the way... Teresa from Shakespeare's Peddler did this one with that vintage crocheted lace, I guess you call it crocheted lace. And I think I have some that was in my mother's stash. And I, if, if I can find it, I'm going to add that to this. It, I think it needs a little something. Tina commented on my videos and she said the first couple smalls that I posted, I didn't hold them up long enough for you to see. And I'm, I'm sure I didn't because I, my first couple of videos were a hot mess. <laughs> um, but th and that was my very first one, so I'm sure I didn't. But here it is. And this came from the Cross Country Stitcher Magazine. It was April 20, 2004. And this is just part of a pattern. It had a heart on the cat and some hearts above everything. But I took all those off. I didn't want the hearts on there. And this is, these are again just smalls, pin keeps, whatever you want to call them. I'm just going to put as a, as a bowl filler, dough bowl filler. And it's all like, um, you know, shaker table and the basket and vine and the, and the um, spool. All things I either have in my home or I would want in my home. And this is the other one. It came from the same magazine, the same pattern. Just pull the section out. It's got the shaker boxes on it and the crock with the bittersweet and another spool. Little drawer table. I just thought they were cute. 
And I backed, I backed this one with corduroy. This, this is real tiny corduroy versus this one. You can kind of see, the, maybe you can see the difference. And it's, it's just really soft. It's almost velvety feeling, both of these. And that's why I, I, I like it. It's just, you just want to hold it. This one is just some fabric I had in my stash that's printed to look like homespun. <clears throat> so those are the smalls that I, I finished. Um, I did the two bigger ones this week. Um, finished these two this week. And the others I had, had finished before. Y'all may have seen those. Um, let's see. I think that's all I have for finishes. A lot of the other pieces that I have, I've framed. And um, I had a little trouble with framing. <laughs> My mother was a framer. She had like a small business going where she... Um, she would frame things for people. It's just, it's just out of the home. She didn't have even a, a studio in the home. She would, she would go to a frame shop, order her molding, and then she put everything together for people. And so she had a, a gun for, for framing, but I haven't used it yet. <laughs> and I was kind of nervous about using it. I didn't want to split my frame or hold it at the wrong angle and um, go into my stitching or something. I was just kind of afraid to do it. So instead I used these glazer points, glazing points. I got this packet Hobby Lobby and glazing points are these little things. I can hold it so you can see it. And you push those in with a screwdriver. They normally go in pretty well. These from Hobby Lobby they just bent. I mean, you should be able to put some pressure on these little arms that stick up, but they just bent flat. And I had a really hard time with them. I've used these glazing points before for things and they've gone in so easy. Um, after I was done, all my, I used them on the um, Blackbird design piece, the as bl Blossom as a Rose, and I, the ship sampler I did. Um, and one other. What was the other one I did? No, I didn't do the other one. I didn't do the other one. <laughs> um, but I did the ship sampler first, and I only managed to get four in the back of this. I haven't I haven't covered the back yet because I wanted to show you. This frame is an antique frame, and I th I really think wood, I know some woods definitely get harder with age. But that was it was hard getting in that wood. And even the, the cheap Hobby Lobby frame that I used for the um, Blackbird design piece, it was it was tough getting them in there, especially if it was a part of the wood that had a knot. Um, I told my husband I was going to check out Lowe's to see if they had some of these glazing points that were a little bit stronger. Because um, these little aluminum ones, just they just bent. A lot of them just bent, and I had to start over. Um, as I was going through... <laughs> some of um, my mom's tools and things while well, I was I was putting some things away I found some glazing points that were hers and they're like made out of steel or something they're not aluminum so I know they make stronger ones and I think that was probably my problem the third piece that I was going to frame but I didn't finish is that piece up there and that's the Sue Hillis piece that I've been um, sharing with you all it's it's just stuck in there right now. It's not even pulled tight, really. I just have the back of the board in there that's wrapped around and another piece on top to hold it because I wanted to see if I liked it. I just, I wasn't 100% sure about that black frame. Once I got it on the wall, I think I do like it. I'm going to go ahead and lace it. I thought about doing a little something extra on it, but maybe not. Maybe I'll just leave it like it is. I thought about a little, little border in the top two corners maybe or something. I don't know. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Think about it for a little while. If you all watch the contented stitcher, she, she'll do that. She will frame things. She'll have it pulled a little tighter than that one is. And she'll leave the fabric in the back and just tape it and kind of secure it temporarily till she's sure what she's going to do. And then she can take things in and out and mix them up and 
um, I thought, well, that's a pretty good idea. So I finally started getting um, things re redecorated here. That's a um, crate that I put the all, all my thread in. And those, the scissors and the spool, they were my mother's. And see, they're kind of like that antique-y, you don't remember in the 70s, maybe early 80s, people would paint their furniture and do that, put that antique finish on it. That's kind of what she did on those. And then toll painted, I think it's cherries, on the thimble. <clears throat> they hung in our laundry room when I was a, growing up. And I just stuck paintbrushes in there for now. I'm going to put something else in there. I, I'm not sure what, but... <clears throat> Uh, that was just the first thing I grabbed, but I think they look pretty good. Both of those are metal pieces, and um, the scissors, were, you know, really move. Of course, I don't think they would. Well, they might cut something, but they're they're heavier than you think, and the, thim the thimble is really heavy. So I thought that's cute. I'm I'm real pleased with that, and I'm anxious to get the rest of this room done because it's got there's a lot of stuff in this room right now. Um, excuse me. <laughs> My mouth is dry. Um, so as I was framing up the the pieces, the Blackbird design piece, and also the ship sampler, I wanted to put in there um, the stories of them, the family history, the names, and and all of that. And for the Blackbird design piece, it's where I had my initials of my husband's, and then his parents, and grandparents, and great grandparents, and um, just their initials and their dates and the year they were born. And I had it all typed up and I thought, this is pretty impersonal. I need to handwrite it. You know, I, I came across, um, an envelope and it had some, um, recipe cards that my mother wrote up and some that my grandmother wrote up. This is another grandmother on my, my father's side and it's in their handwriting and I just love seeing their handwriting. I know back when I did scrapbooking, the lady who would like teach our little classes and things, she should do it your own handwriting. People will want to see that years from now. And that's so true. That's so true. Um, several years back, uh, after my husband's grandmother passed away and his mother passed away before she did, uh, I got some of their recipe cards. And I had never seen it, this done before um i'm not sure how i found out about it it might have been in country living magazine maybe but i learned about spoon flour and how you could send anything to them and they would make it into fabric and so i sent them recipe cards from the two from my husband's mother and grandmother had it turned into fabric and then made tea towels and gave it to his sisters and other um females in the family for Christmas that year. And I had three different, three different um, types. And I can only put my hands on two of them. One of them has a black and white check border on it. Or, and I use it just, I don't use these dry dishes. These have never touched a dirty or wet dish. I just use them to decorate. And I've used it to decorate. And I, I don't know where, where it is. It's probably in a very obvious place, but I, I couldn't find it where I looked. So anyway, here, I just thought I'd show these and just, you know, about the handwriting, how it's so neat. This is how I just sent a scan. I scanned it at work and, well, actually I think I scanned these at home. I didn't have a scanner where I worked at that time. And I scanned them at home and just sent a file to, um, spoon flour and they made this fabric and so I made that was one of the tea towels this is another one it had the recipes on the recipe cards on it and then the third one that was had his grandmother's things these are his mother's writing um, like I said I couldn't put my hands on it I, I've got it somewhere around here. I just I just looked for it yesterday and I couldn't at that time. But um, that's just so so special to have your handwriting on something. So um, I'm going to take my time and write everything up by hand to put 
on the back of these pieces that that um, tell a little bit of family history in them. Uh, I guess I'll show you my whips next. I have been working on Christmas is Coming by Shakespeare's Peddler. Sorry about the glare. This is one of these packs. It's hard to get it out. Put it back in. And this is how far I've gotten. You know, I really didn't need to have a board need to be on a board and be prepared like they do on Sunshine Stitchers because I'm not prepared. That's what I did this week. I had done down to the geese. So the line below the geese, the letters, and then this tree. I've done all, did all that this week. And this is, I'm stitching this. I don't know what I'm stitching this on. <laughs> it's a 36 count something. I can't remember. I'll have to. I don't remember what it's called. But I'm getting a little further on that. It's really going faster than I thought. You know, letters get pretty fast. Even I'm a little slower on 36 count than 32. I think 32 is really my, really my happy place. So, um, I just, I just bought some fabric that was 36, but probably unless I have to have it a smaller, I, I'm going to stick with 32. Um, the other chart I've been working on is Plum Street Samplers, George Decorates for Martha. I think this is so cute. Yeah, I love history. And I love fall and pumpkins. So this, this is just, you know, everything wrapped up in one. Mount Vernon and George Washington, some pumpkins and fall leaves. What more could you ask for? <laughs> This one I got, I did something stupid on it, but let me show you. This is how far I've gotten. Actually, it's upside down. That's it right there. Well, I started stitching this and I decided I was gonna do the border first. Um, especially with the check border, it gives you some good landmarks when you're counting for your other designs. And I like this always start with a dark color if I can. So I started and I was doing these, these all these little boxes. They're just two stitch by two stitch. And when the top, the top of this chart right here, there's a flag. I didn't notice that at first. I was just going along and I originally had the piece this way. <laughs> and then I realized, oh no, I stitched up here all the way. I shouldn't have stitched all of that. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna turn it around. So I, I turned it around so then the, the missing, where the flag goes is right there. I had a note in this chart. I had, I had it kitted up and <laughs> I, was, I used fiber from Stash and I had a note that I had to only leave a hundred, uh, one and a half inch margin is all I could do to use this fabric. I don't know why I said that because look how much, look how much room I have. And here I left a one and a half inch margin on the side, but down below I did two inches. I mean, I can work with that. This is a piece I'm either going to do a flat finish or frame it. <clears throat> So, you know, it's plenty of margin for me to work with, but um, I don't know. I don't know why I did that. These colors so far, this, it's DMC 3371. 
and then it's kind of hard to see. I'm holding it upside down again. <laughs> DMC 822 is a light color between there. See if that'll focus. Over here, I don't have any at all. It doesn't show up well at all. You can see that. And once I noticed it wasn't showing well, I thought, hmm, should I rip it out and get a lighter white? But I decided to leave this like it was because I thought if that's too white with that dark 3371, then it's going to look like Halloween. <laughs> so I'm just going to look like black and white. And I don't want it to look like Halloween. I want it to be more subtle, especially the, this isn't a border I need to pop. I want, I want the picture to pop. I want the pumpkins in the house to pop. So I'm going to do the border with the 337, with the, excuse me, 822. But the rest of the white and the pattern of the house and everything, I'm going to have to switch up. I don't want to go quite, quite as bright as B5200, but whatever that other white is, I have them in my stash. I just have to look. Um, I'm going to use those instead to make sure they show well on the piece. But the border I'm not worried about. So that that's it for whips. That I just I worked on those two and I did finishing and and that was about all I could get done this week. But I did um I do have some haul I want to share with you. I I'm planning some things for Christmas and because they're presents for people, I'm not going to be able to show them on here. So the haul that I get related to that and my whips related to that, I'm not going to be able to show. My plan is to make a video when they're probably when they're all done. I don't know that seeing progress on something is, is beneficial, but I'll just have to play it by ear. And as I put things together um, before Christmas, I'll make a video and then show it after Christmas. And it's it's going to be things that aren't necessarily Christmas related. Um, but they're good gift ideas, really neat re neat ideas. I think what I'm what I'm going to do, and you'd be interested to see. So I've I've been purchasing some things for those Christmas projects that I, so I can't show you. But there was one vendor I bought some things from, and it came it came super quick. Um, I got it off of um, Etsy, and the name of their shop is the Snuggly Monkey. This is their card that they put in my package. And here's their information. If you can, can you see that? I do not have a steady hand, do I? No, um, it's a Snuggly Monkey, and like I said, their stuff came really quick. I also ordered some linen. And this is going to work into those projects. And I didn't pay attention where I ordered it from. I just, it was an Etsy shop and I ordered it. I, I didn't think about where it was. And then when I got this package, it was from Lithuania. But it came in, in eight or nine days. It came really fast. And um, some pretty linen. I can't, I don't have the names of them. And they just have like them by numbers and letters on here. But they're, they're both 32 count Zweigart Belfast linen. And I don't even know if they had a name on the, the Etsy site. And I don't know the name of the vendor. I should, I'll try and look that up and put it in the description. It may not get in there until tomorrow when I can, when I can look that up and get it, get it typed in there. So the description may not post today and then this is the other color it's a gray I thought they were really pretty um, like I said both those vendors super fast then I I need some more linen <laughs> and I'm um, trying to get them some things lined up to, to start stitching I, I bought some I bought some patterns some prairie schooler patterns um, that are Christmassy, and uh, I, I can't wait to show you those when they when they come in. So I'll have those next week for haul. They haven't come in yet, but I was getting fabric for those, and I got these from Fire Poppies. 
there in South, here in South Carolina. And so, you know, I want to try and support as local as I can. They have a brick and mortar shop. And um, this is 36 count raw natural linen. Yeah. It's showing pretty true. And a 32 count lamb's wool jobelin. These are just really good neutrals and it's going to work really good. And of course, whenever you order from Fire Poppies, they send you to Charleston too because they're close to Charleston. <laughs> um, let's see. What I have, let me look at my little notes here and make sure I don't forget anything. Okay. All right. I have some more. Save the stitching. Had a few of you comment and say that you you like that, so um, I wanted to show those to you. And I have a lot of stuff that I've purchased that I didn't really realize I was saving the stitching. I just liked it. Um, but I guess I was saving the stitching. This is an apron, and the pocket is stitched. This is this apron's got some age on it. This is like a almost like a raw cotton. My my husband's family all worked in a cotton mill at one point in time. And when we first got married back in 91, his I I, I did some sewing then and I made my maternity clothes and some little things, some things for our apartment. And his parents gave me a bunch of raw cotton that came from the cotton mill. And it, it was almost like this. Um, this is maybe more like a, I don't know if this is more muslin, but it was unbleached raw cotton. And it was, it was very sturdy. I used root dye and I dyed and it's when you, I used to dye in the washing machine. Did, I can't believe I did that, but I dyed in the washing machine and, um, I made curtains. I remember making curtains with it, and that's what this this fabric of this apron reminds me of. I don't. I feel like I'm not sure if this was handmade or machine made. I kind of feel like it's handmade. I think that whoever made this apron saved the stitches from something else because inside they cut off part of the stitching. It was lined, and then they just folded it under to do it. But the rest of it's really well made. It's <laughs> so, but I, I think that somebody many years ago was saving the stitching. I mean, that's what you did back then. You saved everything you could and reused it. And I have a little more. And I got these, I don't know. I had these a long time ago. I can't remember where I got them. But this is a tablecloth. It's a tablecloth for like a card table. It's a small square. And I'll use it maybe in the middle of another table or um, just kind of in a basket or something. I use it to decorate. I don't really use it for a card table for tea or whatever. But this is it. It has this pattern in the four corners. I think it's so pretty. It's linen. Isn't that pretty? It's really, I mean, here's the back of it. <laughs> Even the back's kind of pretty. They did a good job. And it has napkins that go with it. And like I said, I mainly use these when I decorate. If I have a basket, I might have this hanging out of the basket and something else stuck in it, you know, or um, something like that. But um, I just love love that well I'm coming up on 30 minutes and I'm, I'm just think I'm about done here I don't have I was working hard this week but I don't have anything else to show for it the other pieces you've seen I had them framed but I didn't have them you know fully finished in the frame and secured in the frame um, so I, I did that and 
I had to cut more of the artboard to put. What I do is I wrap the stitch piece around an artboard and, and lace it. And then I cut another piece of the artboard to put behind that to screw it in the frame and then I'll cover it with paper. So I'll be handwriting all my notes to go in the back of my stitching and then putting the paper on them. Do, I'll be doing that this week. Um, I think I'll go ahead and lace that and um, get that get that finished up so that it looks a little bit better in the frame. And then I'm going to start stitching this piece. This was in 2019 fall issue of Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher. And it's designed by Teresa Miller of Teresa's Primitive Treasures. Pumpkin Bird and Tulip is what it's called. I'm going to look. I haven't looked yet in my stash to see if I have a linen that light. But... What I like to do is make is stitch this and maybe make that bird look more like a crow. Do them all in black. Um, and try the coffee and tea stain the way that Daisy K Primitives does. Um, you check out her channel, Daisy K Primitives. Her name's not Daisy or K. Her name is. I want to say Chrissy, but I think that might be wrong. I'm sorry. I've watched so many of your videos and I just can't. I'm not thinking straight right now, but watch her videos because she does a coffee and tea stain after she stitches. She will stitch the piece. Then she will make up the coffee and tea stain and she'll paint it all over the whole thing. And then she'll put it in the oven. And it's like the coffee and tea stain move away from the stitching. So it just kind of gives them a halo stain around it. It has a really neat effect. And I've been, <laughs> I thought about doing it with that piece. But once I got the metallic on there, I thought, I don't think I want to do tea stain on this. And I liked it the way it was. And you know, it was that, that was my second try. I didn't want to have to stitch that thing a third time. Um, but I think I'm going to try on this for sure. If I can, if I have a piece of linen that will work and just see how it turns out. Be, it'd be a cute little, um, primitive piece for the fall. And, um, so I'm going to work on that and my other stitching. I'm going to be, like I said, stitching things that are gifts. That's a big part of what I want to do. I want to get it done early, have all my Christmas gifts done early so that I'm not stressing at the last minute. I don't want to be stressing before Christmas where I have to stitch or so or finish something um, for a gift. That's, I, I like to be prepared. I don't like the last minute stuff. I, I do kind of work well under pressure. If I have pressure, I'll, I'll get it done, but I don't like it. I don't like it. So um, I guess that's it for this week, y'all. And um, I will see you um, in a week's time. And for those of you who have um, your own YouTube channel, I'm probably watching you. Um, if if you don't think I'm watching you, if I'm not su subscribed to you, um, shoot me a, a message and let, and let me know. Uh, I'll check it out. I have some new ones that I've seen on Instagram and I want to um, check those out. I, I find where I'm waiting <laughs> for new videos to come out. I'm like, you know, hey, you normally put it out on Friday, where's your video? You know, you kinda, I, I get into a routine where I, when I sit down to stitch, I wanna watch one of those. I just, it just kinda relaxes me. It's, it's, what, I, it's what I like to do. So, um, I hope you all will like and subscribe and I will do the same and I'll see you next week. Bye.